It's matinee day. Yes, it is. It's Wednesday. Wednesday. It is hump day. And who's here today? We have a special guest. We have a very special guest. His name is Kyle Riabko. His new CD. I mean, yes, I like close to CD. you. Yes. Yeah, this is a close to you uh, cast recording. Look at nice photos. Isn't anyway, that great? Um, yes. Yeah, so very he's here. To chat with him. We're, we'll get to him. Yes. You know, I actually snuck out and saw part of the matinee today. today. You did? did you know that? I did not know that. I went no. to see the cover purple. Oh. I went to see a little Jennifer Holiday. Purple. Jennifer Holiday. Yes. I know that show by heart. It's as you should. Yeah. As we all do. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. But more of Jennifer Holiday later. Uh, there's not that much news today, but there's kind of some big news. Yeah. Well, um, anything well, revolving around Frozen. Yeah, anything revolving around the Frozen title. So and, they're they're taking a page around, out of the Hamilton book. A yeah, bit, revolving yeah. around actors making money. We like this. Mm-hmm. So they, uh, I guess Disney announced that there will be a similar sort of profit sharing situation yep. Yep. to uh, the Hamilton situation with the Frozen cast, which is really interesting. It's kind of a it's kind of early in the development to announce yeah, that. Yeah, and the, so it'll be the very first Broadway show to land having already that place in deal for everybody. Yeah. So, so some actors, that's amazing. Make a little bit more moolah. That's and amazing. for those actors, yeah, especially. Yeah, everyone, even the little, uh, what are those little, those, what were those? What were those little no, no, gnomes? What were those? Are those gnomes? <laughs> oh, they're, they're like trolls. Trolls. They were they're trolls. Little, yes. Sorry, they were trolls. <laughs> everyone, everyone, everyone's no, in I'll on the make a little, I'll everyone. make a little piece. Uh, Lynn manuel Miranda. Oh, yes. He, he, I, I just named him Star of the Week in the, on the Broadway.com show. That new mm-hmm. episode is up. And so this is, this is an interesting statistic. The, him, he hosted Saturday Night Live. Yep. That's why he was Star of the Week. And on top of everything sure else you may have he's doing. Uh, it was a 12 year high. In ratings for a second week telecast. Yes. Which means... So which usually is, there's that big drop-off for the right. second week. There was, there was no drop-off. No. There was no drop. 7.14 million viewers. So what does this tell you, NBC, about sort of thinking outside the box? Mm-hmm. Bringing those Broadway stars. Don't just stars. bring those same people mm-hmm. no, who we have are, some uh, crappy movie to promote. Yeah, right? Broadway, some Broadway lovers some, are a force to be reckoned with yeah, with TV ratings. Bring some more. And, and, so, and with Grease Law, I mean, we, we cover yeah. a lot of huge ratings. So we submitted a whole list of people on the culturalist results mm-hmm. of people that you might want to consider. Yes, great and, names up there. And you'll get the same exact rating success. I prom- <laughs> we promise. Every single time. <laughs> we don't really promise you that, <laughs> but do it. Us. Just do it anyway. Uh, we have a new feature, uh, the new Feinstein. A lot of people are coming to Feinstein's 54 Below. Yes, I was just looking at this. Have yeah. you been there recently? I, I, not recently, no. I think I saw Matt Doyle there not too long ago. He Is was that the, the Christmas one. show? Uh, I think so, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> a while ago. It's almost Christmas again. <laughs> I know. Oh, but God. anyway, uh, that was when it, that was, it was just 54 Below then. It yes, it wasn't Feinstein's. Yet. Yet. It's yes. fancier now. Uh, Kate Baldwin's coming. Sure. Allison Gwynn, who was in On the Town. Uh, Jared, Jared Spector, Spector right? Laura Austin's The Newsboys. They're doing a Britney Spears night. Mm-hmm. So you can find out about all of that. We have a new feature on the site. Uh, also, the Red Carpet Challenge. From so yes. hilarious. Yeah. You have to check this out. Yeah. It is fantastic. So our, our Red Carpet Challenge videos. So this, this one uh, was at Oh Hello, mm-hmm. the opening. And Nick Kroll and John Mulaney, they don't seem to know Hamilton. Hamilton. <laughs> they, they were reading... Lyrics verbatim and had no idea what they were reading from. And, uh, They're busy. And falsetto star uh, Betsy Wolf doesn't seem to know <laughs> no, what anything about a New York accent. <laughs> no, no, no. Which was interesting. And so, Mario Cantone thinks he's an old gay who doesn't know what the chorus is. He Why, thinks that. Or, yeah. <laughs> he just thinks that. Yeah. Oh, uh, so, anyway, check that video out. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> and finally, uh, I had William Finn on Show People. Yes. Which was kind friends. of a terrifying experience for me. Intimidating? I, he, yeah, because I'm a huge fan of William Finn. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's he's super intimidating. I can imagine. And he kept me on my toes. I felt like I had to be really like. No, you're stuck. Just, you, well, yeah. And yeah. also, you know, you have to just keep going. Like, come on, come on, come on, come on, <laughs> Bill. Let's have some fun. <laughs> and then by the end, I feel like it was all right. So He's anyway, great. so check that out, too. Mm-hmm. And that's all I got. That's everything. That's, that's, that's the stuff. news. But let me get out because there's a handsome guest. Uh, so yes. Let me, let me get out of there. So why don't you introduce him and I'll give him Mr. Kyle Riabko. Come on in. Come on in. I was wondering what Come on in. Our live right. studio audience. Yeah, I love it. Hello, people of <laughs> Earth. Hello. Welcome. Thank you so much for oh, joining man, thanks us. Thanks for having me. Of course, yeah. of course. So my first question is for you, uh, what does it feel like to be a prodigy? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> just... I just turned 29, so I don't think that applies Oh, anymore. my gosh. Yeah. No, so let's let's catch people up a little bit. So they may know you from What's It All About, which was at the New York Theater Workshop That's in right. 2013, That's right? Correct, yeah. I didn't happen to catch that, but it was a huge hit for you. And then, the, it, so it's, it's Bacharach Reimagined is the, the, the gig that yeah. you 
yes. sort of doing. And then you took it to the Many a Chocolate Factory. That's correct. And then you opened on the West End almost a year ago. That's today. right. Yeah, that's exactly right. And so now you're you're back you're back here. How was that experience? What was what was it like? It was amazing. I had never spent you know a long period of time in London before, and I, I really mm -hmm. fell in love with it. I'm Canadian, so. The vibe was similar. Right. What was your favorite thing about London? Uh, God, that's a really tough one. I just, I, I got to walk from my apartment through Piccadilly Circus every day oh. and see our, <laughs> um, you know, poster up on the thing, yeah. the marquee. Yeah, it was kind of a beautiful thing. Yeah, I can yeah. imagine. There that are like a series of, of pictures online of Piccadilly Circus through the years in the 60s and mm -hmm. the 50s and you know, with all these old Coca-Cola ads up, and it's just cool to know that one of them was mine at one point. Right, Yeah. right. And also, you may, you may have fans that recognize you from, you did Spring Awakening, yes. you replaced yeah. Jonathan Groff That's in there, right. and then one on the tour, yeah. and you also replaced Gavin Creel in Hair That's as right. well. That's so you've, you've done a little bit of everything, Broadway yeah. audiences, Broadway audiences know and adore you. Thank you. So tell us about what you're doing here. You have a couple of concert performances yeah. coming Yeah, so up. I'm at Joe's Pub on October 17th and 18th. That's Monday and Tuesday, and uh, I'm doing a solo show, a solo version of the Bacharach Reimagined thing, so I'm sort of stripping it all back to where it began, and mm -hmm. it's just me and a guitar and the songs, and I'll be telling some stories about my experiences with Bert and his career, and it should be fun. You and Bert are friends. We are, are friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a That's strange gotta thing be to wild. say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's wild, all right, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a blessing to, to consider him someone I even know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so what is, for people that might not be super familiar with Burt Bacharach and his mm -hmm. music, what was it about his songbook, his music, him himself, that really, that got you to really invest in doing his Well, song? I had always known and loved his music, um, sort of in the back of my mind, because my mother used to sing it to me a lot at mm -hmm. home. And, um, and then I, in my life, I sort of became a blues rock guy, and I, I didn't think much about Bacharach, but then I was hired uh, to to be a singer for him in the studio on some new music he was working on. And so I had this amazing afternoon with him where I, I was in the presence of his genius and I just sort of was like, I'm not gonna let this go, I gotta keep this going. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then when you start to dig in as a student, you realize the, the wealth. mass, the wealth of, of hits that he's written, yeah. and it's just sort of mind boggling. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, those melodies last forever, so I just, figured I would carry the torch a little further. Yeah, to catch people up a little bit, you yeah. learned to play guitar when you were nine or ten, That's right? That's right, yeah. And then you released your first, you recorded and released your first album before your high school graduation. That's correct. That's yeah, insane. Yeah. Well, thanks. <laughs> My first band was called 10, 11, 12, because those were our name, our ages, oh. respectively. <laughs> Yeah, I was the tan one. And you've toured with some <laughs> incredible artists: BB uh, King, James yeah. Brown, Maroon Five, Jason Mraz. What is there? I I don't even know how you would go about picking a a, a favorite. Or but yeah. what were those experiences like? Was that? It's amazing. I mean, yeah, I, I was so lucky to be in the presence of these. A lot of by the time I met Bird, I was sort of used to being around. Mm. You know, these legendary people, and I have just had the best seat in the house for all these yeah. years, just a skinny Saskatoonian from Canada. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I just, you know, meeting James Brown before he passed away was, mm. was probably a highlight for me. Right. You, I couldn't understand a word he said, but um, it, was, <laughs> it was pleasant. Right. Yeah. Is there, what the um, were these artists that you, like, obviously yeah. loved? The, so, yeah, I mean, to be time. an opening act for them would... Big time, yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. B.B. King, you know, sitting with him and talking to him after a show. B.B. King was always my, like, ultimate idol right and uh, so that was brilliant and buddy guy he almost made me go deaf once he was so loud and, uh, but yeah some great great that's incredible times. yeah and so you as as a young as a young person as a kid practically yeah. would you so back in Saskatoon you would yeah. go to what is it buds on Broadway yeah, yeah, that's right and you yeah. would play there for a couple of late night drinkers or yeah <laughs> no they had my my friend that I went to school with his dad said hey there's this bar called buds on Broadway and I heard that on Saturday afternoons, it's all ages, so kids can mm. come in. And you can bring your guitar and jump up on stage. So it was all like, you know, 50, 60-year-old cigarette-smoking old blues hounds. <laughs> and then I would get up there with this enormous Fender Stratocaster. And that's how I learned. Right. Just threw myself into it. Right. Do you, is it, we're going to take a couple of questions here, but oh, we'll yeah, keep sure, going, sure. sort of. Cool. Um, so our friend Joanne would like to know if you have any plans to return to Broadway or either in acting or bring close to you here. Yeah, I don't... There's, there's nothing solid right now, but... Uh, 
you never know about the close to you thing. Mm -hmm. That's always a possibility. It exists now, so we'd love to do it again. Right. Uh, and then as far as acting, yeah, it's just about, with me, it's just about the, the right thing coming along. You know, it, it has to sort of be right for me because I'm not, right. I didn't grow up w within theater. So uh, when Spring Awakening came along, it was just yeah. like, oh, that's a great mix of what I do. Um, so it's just, I, I wait for the right thing. Yeah, you seem yeah. to have been like the music of Spring Awakening seems like it falls within something yeah. you'd be comfortable doing. And Absolutely. Same thing with hair. Every totally. Day. Yeah, that, that, I'm admittedly, it, it's not everything in theater works for me as a, as a vocalist especially. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, that you're right. But what's been great about the last 10 years is that there are so many shows that that uh, use the music that I sort of grew up with. In, in the, right. Yeah. So. And then for people that aren't familiar, it's you don't just do, these aren't just Burt Baccarat covers. That right. Are sort of, they're reimagined takes, re, correct, recalibrated yeah. takes on this. And I don't know if this, they sort of sound in the... Fleet Foxes, yeah, Sufjan yeah, Stevens kind that of vibe, works, yeah. is that what you that's would describe cool. it? Yeah, it's very acoustic, a lot of it. Um, and yeah, that, those those are good examples. And people, I mean, it was a huge hit, I mean, for all of those transfers, obviously. What is it, do you think people just didn't quite know that they loved Burt Bacharach music that much? Yeah. Is that, like, well, I've been you... saying this, and it's true, <laughs> I had sort of this amazing view of people in the audience, the light bulb turning on brighter and brighter as the show went on, because they go, oh, I've I didn't know he wrote that and, mm -hmm. that and that. Like, always something there to remind me, for example. People don't think of that as a Bacharach song, but right. when you launch into it, it's like a collective just, sigh of, yeah. wow. Right, right, right. Are there other... Are the, I know that this isn't just your shtick, but are there other mm. songwriters or songbooks that you've had similar ideas about undertaking the way you have with Bacharach? Yeah, there, there are a couple, and I, I've, I've been tinkering with it with a couple of... I don't want to give it away yet, but, uh, but yeah... It's something I like to do. So keep your yeah. eyes and ears open yes. for, for, more, for more of that from Kyle. Um, uh, Brooke would like to know if you've had any on-stage mishaps. Oh, my God. People love this question. People love, like, when did you screw up? <laughs> like, well, yeah. of course, and they do love to hear about you screwing up, yeah. <laughs> They're and, all human, too. <laughs> yeah. In Spring Awakening, uh, I played Melchior, mm -hmm. and so you have to reveal your uh, one of your butt cheeks through the show. Right. So what we happens every once in a while, and there's a very specific uh, uh, distance that it's supposed to go down, very and quiet. every once in a while the choreography is <laughs> not right, let's just put it that way. Right. Yeah. So that happened. I believe yeah. I've also read something about, p you, people have heard you urinating. Oh, that well, has. How'd you do? That's, that's oh, I've read. Yeah. I've been doing my... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had my... Uh, obviously, there's one section in the show, I think we were in San Francisco maybe, and... Um, there's one, Melchior is on stage a lot, but there's one part where I'm not, and so I always sort of plan it's my pee break. break there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I guess my mic wasn't muted, and so the, the other characters... Careful those hot mics. Yeah, those, <laughs> we've learned this year that hot mics are the number one public enemy. That's, that's right. Yeah, but uh, the, it worked, though, because the monologue that was going on at the time was about, like, the forest springs and the waterfalls and so stuff, you and they were heard just a waterfall. contributing yeah, to the, exactly. yes. yeah. So, Brooke, you got a butt story and a peace story. Yes, so we read <laughs> This is a highbrow show. Poughkeepsie says yeah. hello. Yeah. Um, so you, you you were saying that the coming back to Broadway, doing things, the acting yeah. thing is always sort of out there. Yeah. Are there are there shows that you've gotten to love that you would love to jump into or something you'd like to originate? What's What are your Broadway thoughts and dreams? That's a tricky one for me because I, I I don't I, I just don't really know right mm. now. Yeah, there's 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 nothing that that jumps to mind. I mean, I really love creating this show from scratch sure. myself, and so I kind of want more of that. Um, but we'll see. Like I said, it's just sort of waiting for the right project to come mm -hmm. along. It, and it, I, it can happen much quicker than you think. Right. Like hair, I was in the middle of figuring out what I was going to do next, and had no thoughts about hair at all. And you, you get the call on Wednesday and on Sunday, that's the next year of your right, life. You know? Right, yeah. If yeah. Diane Paulus calls you. That's you, true, yeah. You yeah, yeah you pick like, up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, <laughs> Diane, I'm busy. <laughs> Are there, um, I know you've been super busy, but have there been things, shows you've seen that you that have really inspired you, that you've enjoyed anything that you... I've been way out of the loop because I've been in London so much. So I, I'm like the worst guy to ask right now, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. I have to, while I'm here, hopefully, Hopefully I'll get to see a couple things. I bet we were just talking about Oh Hello. I yes, love, I yes. love uh, Nick Kroll and John Mulaney, and, and uh, that, that I would love to see. They're fantastic. Yeah. You have to check out that red, the red carpet channel. Yeah, yeah, I will now that I'm talking about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, um, 
What have you... So you've lived... Now, you're from Saskatoon. Yes. You've lived in New York City. Yes. You've lived in L.A. Yes. You've lived in London. You're kind of like... Yeah, ticking Toronto. Them off. Yeah. Is there a city that especially spoke to you that you love that you know where what would you what would you even consider home at this point it's a really good question i love living in toronto i still feel mm. that that's a very special city to me and saskatoon i was actually just there for two weeks uh seeing my family and playing some shows and that feels very much like home to me it just feels right it's like right, beautiful sure. river it's a beautiful place it feels like a great place to be from and mm -hmm. I, I sort of had to break out of that, but it's the place that I feel most home in. Right. Um, and then two weeks later, I got to get back to a bigger city. When you're performing on stage, do you prefer do you prefer to be inhabiting a character the way you did with Melchior and Claude, or would you prefer doing sort of what you've done with Close? I'm to better you at my, being myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I love acting. I, I really do, but it's not my first instinct. So right. it's not a natural thing for me. I have to really. It's like. It's like being in a different field and study, and I'm not even sure I've ever been really that good at it. But I like it. But it's it's a it's a a challenge. It's, sure. It's not it's not like music feels like it sort of flows. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so give people a preview a little bit of what these concerts at Joe's Pub will be like. What's the? Yeah. Well, it's just it's just me and a guitar, and um, uh, I'm gonna be playing some of the arrangements from the album from the show. And telling stories too. I just you know I'll, I'll tell some stories about Bert. I have some you know great moments shared with him. So it'll be intimate, you know, in a good way. Intimate, intimate with Kyle. Yeah. Um, Brooke would also like to know what advice did Jonathan Groff give you when you stepped into playing? He Storm? said you'll be he said you'll be surprised that the easy things will become the hard things and the hard things will become the easy things the longer you do the show. Mm. And he couldn't have been more, I, I kind of didn't know what he meant, but he's so right, because part of the struggle of, of doing a Broadway show is the repetition, is the eight shows a week. Right. And that's a new thing, when you've never done that before, that's a, that's a slap in the face. And, <laughs> and it's, a, it's so good to, to, to experience that for the discipline of it. Mm -hmm. But what starts happening is your mind starts switching things on and off. So when you'll get obsessed with a note that you don't like the way you're hitting. And maybe when you first started, you were too nervous to think about that note. Right. And you were nailing it every night. And then you get more comfortable over a few months and you're thinking about that note, that note, and it becomes hard. So it's a, it's, it's a, it's the psychology of the performer, uh, you really learn a lot about doing theater. Yeah, as right. You know, yeah. And you're someone, I mean, you're clearly fantastic at your gift, at what you sort of do, but do you, is there a impetus in you to sort of keep up with learning always new things to like how do you go about sort of practicing and keeping up your craft all the time yeah I mean I play I've, I'm most at home playing guitar so I'm always sort of practicing guitar and, and playing it and fiddling around with it and and just listening to what else is out there and what music is coming out and start, sort of understanding what the language of the day is mm -hmm. and so yeah I mean music you'd never you, you never know everything. You just have to. Right. You just it's your. It's so cheesy, but you're constantly a student. Yeah. yeah. And what what musical artists today are you into, inspired by? Uh, well, I, lo I love Ray LaMontagne. I, I've always really loved him, and uh, I'm trying to think of. That's that's a good, that's a good start for me right now. Right. Yeah. I listen right. to a lot of old stuff too, obviously with the background thing, but. I tend to listen to old stuff, Sly and the Family Stone. Yeah. You know. Well, so well, I want to make sure people know the close to you album is available. Make sure that yes, you get that. For you very young people, this is a CD. Yes. This is what yeah. we used to listen to music on. It's so true. make sure you get these. Go on to Spotify and repeat it. So you'll be at Joe's Pub this Monday and Tuesday, yes. 17th, 18th. Yeah. Check that out. And I should mention, too, that November 4th and 5th, I'll be in L.A. at the Wallace Annenberg Center, which should be really fun, too. So, yeah. Make yeah. sure you go check it out and listen to some background. Yeah, Kyle, man. thank you so oh much God, for joining for us. Yeah, of course, it's a, pleasure. Such a yeah. pleasure. And we will see all of you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow.